Thanks, Karen. G'day, everyone. Gus Dears, my name, board member of the VFA, and uh, yeah, I'm a fisherman and uh, caught my first fish when I was a little kid at Redfin in Ringwood Lake in Melbourne and been hooked on fishing ever since. And I'm going to Melbourne the week before Christmas to go fishing. And uh, 20 years ago, would someone have said that? I'm going to go to Melbourne to, uh, to go fishing. You know, I live in East Gippsland and uh, I'll explain why I said that in a minute. The, um, today I'm going to con convince you to go bass fishing. Also talk about a little bit about um, some of the strategies of the VFA and uh, a little bit of the logic behind our strategies. I'm going to talk about my version of science, try and convince you to catch a bass, and then a little bit about how to. So just bear with me. And I did say my version of science. So uh, here's the destinations that we might have across Victoria in the next um, 20 years. I'm just drawing circles on a map here, OK? But uh, one of the things that the VFA has done is released a strategy this year. And we talk about things like setting up destinations for fishing. And I think this is new uh, lingo for us in the fishing world. It's trying to drive the excitement around fishing. We also know that if we're going to try to establish excitement around fishing, uh, we have to start to establish... Oop, I've, I've stuffed this one up, Taylor. There you go. I pushed the wrong button. Before you start saying, oh, we're going to create a destination of sorts, you've got to fix your rivers. You have to fix your rivers, make sure your lakes are healthy, make sure your waterways are healthy. Now, what that picture is, that's the Genoa River. On the top left-hand corner, you'll see that it's virtually got no vegetation along the edge of it. The bottom right-hand corner is the same stretch of river today. Now, the reason I put these, this picture up is the top left-hand corner was in 1980 and the bottom right-hand corner is in 2015. So whilst it's easy to say, let's just fix a river, it's, uh, it's not very quick. So if we're going to move to sort of improving our waterways and improving destinations for fishing, we also got to have a little bit of patience in the doing, I think. I often think with a fish population, maybe 10 years to get it from not much good to get really good. With a river, it's 30 years. So it takes a bit of effort. Uh, here's another example of the effort that's required. That's the Can River on the left-hand side. That's now fully fenced, 100% re-veg. Uh, or every landholder along that Reacher River in Can River has agreed to fence off his uh, river frontage, keep his cat and her cows out, and also to look after it in the long term. So we've got 100% of the Can River fenced off now. And the kids on the right, uh, last week, were introducing bass back into the Can River. So we've got the river right now, and now with VFA's help, We've put 50,000 bass into the can and those little kids were helping the other day. They were very excited. So my point is, if we want to start to create destinations and excitement, then it takes a bit of time and then we have to work together to do it. Now over to the bass numbers and estuary perch numbers, just to talk about my little corner of, uh, of uh, Victoria. So what it's saying there is fisheries in the last five years have stocked the Gippsland waterways with about 1.8 million native fish. Uh, about 1.2 million bass and about 700,000 estuary perch. So like the story with Eildon and the story now that's beginning at Rocklands, we've got to put substantial numbers of fish into places if we're going to create these sort of destinations to fish. I think destinations will create excitement. This is my little individual piece of excitement. I think about um, what I want to achieve in each part of Victoria. I've got aims for what I want to catch. I've met some of those aims. I've failed miserably on others, like on Friday night. I still can't get a decent sized cod on a surface lure. So I'm either no good at it, or I'm not lucky, or I haven't been in the right place yet. But uh, what I'm aiming for is a metre-long cod out of uh, somewhere like Eildon on a surface lure. 
Some of my other aims on the left-hand side, a meet along Mulloway, got there. Uh, 10 pound trout out of um, a stocked waterway. I'm at eight pound. At seven pound trout, trying to get a 10 pound one in a wild trout stream. Uh, bass, I got to my 50 centimetres this year, and like every fisherman, I got to 55 and now I've just upped it to 60. So, uh, why? Because one of my mates has caught a 60 centimetre bass, so I can't have that. Like, it's, there's no way I'm going to have one do better than me. Whether I get there is really irrelevant, but what I'm trying to say is I think fishing can drive some real excitement. Excitement for the individual, but also a bit of more collective excitement because uh, there's potential maybe uh, when we go to electronic mediums more, maybe a grand slam for Victoria, you know, a meet along Cod and Eildon, um, a meet along uh, Flathead, John I'll chair in your pain, um, 99 centimetre cod for you. 98 centimetre flathead for me, just can't quite get over the metre. So I think there's real potential for excitement around Victoria, around fisheries. Now, why? Well, fishermen like me, like we're mad. We just buy more and more and more gear. And that's just an example. There's 33 rods and reels on the roof of my shed. Then the boxes, the, the orange boxes of bass, trout, um, Mulloway, Flathead, the, the clear boxes are um, soft plastic lures, hard, hard body lures. My message is that idiots like me are going to help us continue this billions of dollars that fishing is generating. At the moment we're at 2.3 billion, now I'm working on that, getting close to 2.4. <laughs> What I'm talking about actually is strategy, believe it or not, is fishing is driving regional economies. Not the only driver, but it is one of the drivers of regional economies. Now, why did I mention Melbourne? So now there's no uh, professional fishermen uh, with nets in uh, Port Phillip Bay. Mates of mine are catching calamari, whiting, um, snapper, gummy shark, in Port Phillip Bay, and now I want to get back there into Melbourne where I was born and start to fish those places again and catch some of those really good fish that they're getting right in the middle of Melbourne. Right, onto the science. I've got to convince you to, uh, that bass are a great thing to catch, so of course I'm, I'm being flippant, science schmines. We've got, whoop, I can't even get that right. We've got two forms of evidence I'm going to present to you. All of it's rubbish, but I just thought I'd give it a go. So pound for pound, bass, I reckon, fight harder than Murray Cod. Over to the picture. Right, there's a typical bass. That's, say, 48 centimetres, and uh, that fish is probably about 20 years old, and uh, they pull really hard, OK? You'll notice the broad tail. Um, the quite sort of uh, streamlined body, that thing's built for power. This thing is not. <laughs> That's about the same length. Notice the droopy tail, the saggy looks, <laughs> the forlorn face, okay? He gave up really quick, right? Well, the bass will not do that. They don't give up. So that's one of my first forms of evidence. There's another one. Now that bass is old. That's a 55 centimetre bass to the tip, and it's probably 25 years old, but have a look at its belly, okay? Slim, sleek, powerful. Bass stay powerful their whole lives. Have a look at this next one. <laughs> Power schmauer, okay? Look at that thing. Now look, they're big, right? You catch big fish, and I'm pleased that everyone has got a chance to catch a metre cod. But look at that thing. Look at the soft underbelly. That's not a powerful unit. <laughs> now, I thought I'd survey some typical bass fishermen. <laughs> so I got a focus group together and uh, I asked them some questions. Do bass pull hard? And uh, they said they do, but it wasn't compelling, the results. I wasn't quite sure what I was finding out. Then I surveyed some Murray Cod fishermen. <laughs> Typical focus group, but again, the findings weren't compelling. 
Okay, right up. Now back to the facts. Bass, how to catch them. The trick is they're not as big as Murray Cod, right? So they're a great fighting fish. Pound for pound, I don't have any doubt. They fight really hard and they're fun to catch. People often say, how do you catch them? There's a bit of mystery about them. It's pretty simple to you folk. They're a native fish. They act the same way. They like um, high barometer settings. They like active food. They're very similar to your Murray Cod. Uh, they're, just, they're just a little smaller and they're in a different place. So if you wanted to gear up um, for bass, all you've got to do is downside your gear. They love spinnerbaits, but they like smaller spinnerbaits. Um, they don't have as big a mouth as those great big Murray Cod you've got. They love surface lures, okay? Um, but, same thing, just downsize them. Get a jointed jitterbug, don't get too fancy. Um, I like black lures, black lures, black knights. That's the sort of thing that works pretty well. And I think very similar to what a Murray Cod might do. The rods, the reels, very simple. Um, you guys use 10,000 size fishing reels, 40 pound braid, 60 pound leaders. Oh, I do too, of course, because you don't want to lose a big cod and you don't want to harm a big fish when you do hook it. Well, bass are sort of the same. Uh, the gear's smaller, but that's a 2500 um, reel. The line's 20 pound braid. I use about 15, 20 pound leaders. Now, for a four, four or five pound fish, that might seem excessive, but a bass pulls really hard right in the early stages of the fight. If you don't want to leave it with a lure in its mouth hanging connected to a, to a snag somewhere, use reasonably heavy gear. The rods, um, same story. You're using 10, 15 kilo rated rods. On bass, I just use a brim rod. And uh, so I reckon anybody could look into their shed nowadays, say you go redfin fishing in the lakes here, you could grab that redfin uh, outfit, put 20 pound braid on uh, or, and a 20 pound leader and you could go bass fishing. As you don't really have to get specialist gear, Trelly will say you do and uh, going back to my slide, I clearly think you need to but um, the reality is you don't need to. It's not as mystical or hard as you think. Places to go. So people often think bass fishing's really hard, okay? And you've got to do the hard yards to, to catch a bass. Well, I think, I think differently. You can do it hard if you want to. So we've got lots of remote places where we've got Australian bass and they're beautiful places. They take a lot of effort to get into them. But that's an example of the three slides to the right. That's a day with the Ingram boys. That's Will Ingram and Craig Ingram. And we did 20 kilometres in the river that day. They nearly killed me. And uh, they're, they're like golem, those two. You know, they hop from rock to rock, even if it's wet, you know. But uh, for me, I'm, I'm not like golem, right? So it's, you can have a really, do a really hard day if you want to. The photo on the top left, that's Will Ingram when he was a little kid. So he's been bass fishing. That's in the same river, by the way. So he's been bass fishing those rivers his whole life. Very competent angler. Right, yeah, sometimes it is hard work. If you want to do, if you're an adventure-based fisherman, come bass fishing with me. Because we do some hard yards sometimes, walking up rivers, wading through them, backpacking. That's my brother on the right, nearly killed him. We did two days in a remote river. Um, but the places that you actually can find and camp and stay, if you're an adventure angler, East Gippsland and Gippsland are just magnificent places to go fishing. And, uh, you know, those sorts of spots, they, they are seriously special. We've got lots of them. Then there's another way you can go about it. So um, bass are also in very readily accessible locations. We've got bass in Glen Maggie. That's a picture just a month ago in Glen Maggie, fishing out of a boat. Um, and on the same trip, that's a, a mate of mine and we went, that was 50 metres from um, a bridge on the Princess Highway. So that was just a matter of walking about 10 paces and starting to cast lures. If you wanted to catch a bass in Gippsland now, because Fisheries has put bass in so many places, 
You can go anywhere from Tarelgan right through to Mallacoota on the Princess Highway and stop on the bridge, uh, walk underneath the bridge and start casting a surface lure in the evening and odds on you'll catch a bass. And, and I think as a destination and as, as, a, as a, a place for fishermen, for kids, for, for adults, for people who love adventure, for people who like the simpler fishing or easier fishing like boat fishing and, and the like, bass have, got, um, bass have got it for you. Uh, you don't have to do it, but um, I believe it's a worthwhile thing to do and it's just another element of your fishing grand slam. Thank you.